We are Ben and MP and we've been refitting this boat for a while now to eventually go sailing on it and make it as off grid as possible. I've been promising you for a while that we were going to move outside and do some really cool stuff. Did I really need a chainsaw to cut these pieces off? The heat exchanger of our engine was in such a bad state that we really had to do something about it. And as we finally have the boat primed, we can finally start installing our rudder. I even gave welding a go and I started to learn welding on a part of our rudder which will prevent it from falling in the water. So let's hope this holds. I'm not a welder, you see. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It really supports us. Enjoy. A lot of the stuff in the boat and outside the boat is done. One really big thing that we started a long time ago and haven't gotten to yet is the rudder. It's been uh, painted with epoxy resin and it's been sitting under the boat for ages. And we're gonna start changing that. And for that, we've got Matt from Colorado who's come over here for two weeks to help us out, which is super amazing. Super excited. Yeah. Watching since the start. Six. So awesome to see Yava in person, meet you guys, and be able to lend a hand. I don't know if this is on time lapse or regular, and I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, thanks for having me down. This is really fun and cool. And uh, oh, I probably can't swear. Uh, super awesome to uh, be here and be helping out and uh, be a part of something that I've spent so much time watching from home. So thanks again. I really appreciate you guys. Epoxy has been sanded down or sanded back so it's nice and smooth. We've added some fairing compound and uh, now it's all been clean and everything. We're going to apply the same steps as on the hull. Practically about here will be the anti-fouling and everything above will be the PU paint, polyurethane. Small change of plans. As we were flipping this, we damaged a lot of the paint on the other side. So what we're gonna focus on now is where the mounts, the stainless steel mounts are gonna go and the quadrant. And we're gonna hang out onto the boat and then we'll have a hanging rudder so that we can paint it easily on both sides when it's up on the boat without having to flip it and scrape it. Because I'm sure lifting it up there is not gonna be an easy job and it's not gonna keep all this paint nice and tacky. I think we rushed the drying period of the first primer last time because, yeah, I think we rushed it because it's not sticking very well. So we sanded off absolutely everything where the mounts will go, apply this, let it dry, and then we'll see what happens to the remaining bits. If anything, we'll sand it off and start again because we want to do this properly. But we're going to put this on and let it dry and probably tomorrow apply the other epoxies in the morning and then we can probably hang out half in the afternoon. If you're impatient, you're just gonna have to do it all over again. And we've learned many times, or haven't learned many times, but we always make sure we do it properly after all. We're still working in the gearbox, but we're also gonna start working on our heat exchanger now. The heat exchanger is a fun story because it's been through a lot. <laughs> We have this one, it's original from Yaba, it was the one that was in it when we bought her and it was in a very bad state. The tubes on the side were all corroded and we really considered getting rid of it and getting a new one. The thing is, the, all the ones we found to buy new 
were made out of steel. And this one we have is aluminium. And we really thought it was worth it to work on our aluminium one, trying to make it good again, instead of replacing it for steel because aluminium is superior and also lighter. So we really thought it was worth it to give that a go. So instead of getting a brand new one, we just refurbished the heat exchanger we had with the help of Jason. This is Jason that's going to help us restore our heat exchanger and now honestly I have to leave it for him because he's in charge. So now we're gonna work on just making it smooth, make sure everything is sealed, and then we can also paint it, install it, and start having fun with it. Given Matt a break because he can't handle the heat. I'm kidding, he worked hard and now he's behind the camera because he's a great help. And these windows were left open when it rained all of a sudden. So these brand new unvarnished pieces of very soft wood have gotten wet. So now we have to try and get the stains out without ruining the bit that was routed. So I'm practicing on this small one, it's like a tiny bit and then I'll move over to this. Very annoying. Yeah. I think we should send these so it doesn't happen again. Uh, varnish. What do you think? Came back from that coffee break. Just kidding, that came back from the engine. Working on the engine. This, those, <coughs> rest on those, and this goes straight through the middle to hold them both in place. Before we couldn't notice it that much, however now that Matt's gone over it and polished everything, not only can I see my own beautiful reflection now, but you can see these huge holes in it. We thought, because we were looking at the top part, we thought it was just some sur surface uh, damage and nothing serious, however this is quite deep. I'd say it's about 2-3 millimeters deep, so I'm going to try and just get some electrode or stick welding done in it, see if I can close it, sand it off, and then we'll polish it smooth again. I'm not a welder, you see. Now I've made this beautiful mess, it's Matt's turn to clean this all up again. <laughs> I 
This was the first actual weld, technically on a boat, even though it was just filling. I think it looks pretty cool. Sorry, Matt, that we didn't see this before and that you're gonna have to do this again. However, this is the underwater bit. The bit that's above water, of course, didn't get all these issues because it's above water. Soon it's gonna look very, very nice. Tip is, don't weld big pieces because when you want to sand it down, your hand is not a lathe and you're like, you can't really find where the curvature of the tube is, the pole. So if you were to just like do little bits, you get a flat bit, a bubble, and a flat bit. And you sand it off, add another little weld, and so on. Way, way easier to sand a uh, little bubble, a little weld, than the whole thing. Funny because the spray today is especially hard and I was struggling a lot I thought I should work out my finger more and then Ed was also struggling it's just so hard <laughs> we gotta work out of our water pump Ta-da! how nice the water pump is blue because it has to do with the cooling system where water will go through and the pulley is yellow because it's for safety when anyone comes in the engine room and the engine is working I'm just gonna say don't touch anything that's yellow because of course they're turning they're dangerous so yeah yellow pulley blue pump and this is the result who else loves it? Because I, I really do. Now we have got all the nuts, washers and the screws. It took us a while because I don't know about the rest of the world, but here in Brazil, we have 13 thread and 12 thread bars, which is just, I don't know why they have two different ones. It literally means how many threads per a certain amount of distance. So we had 13 and 12 and it was just a hassle to find all the nuts that fit on them. So we just got rid of all the 13 and just stuck with 12, which is what most of the boat is. Now the next step is to apply masking tape onto where the mounts are going to go so that we can apply a bunch of Seeker Flex, put the mounts on and then let it dry, put the, put the thre uh, threaded bars through, tighten them break the thread so it doesn't unroll don't see what can go wrong with all of that but there always is something so let's get to it
It's only like, what, 90 degrees and 100% humidity here? Only. We mounted the brackets on the rudder uh, with Sika Flex after we primed underneath. We're going to prep the, uh, what is this called? I will put it in the bottom later. I've seen them do that before. Get these mounted with the other half of the, whatever this thing's called. I'll put that in the bottom too. Right there. And then now uh, we're going to get the rudder mounted on the boat so that uh, one step away from sailing. What are you doing with that fan? I'm going to work with the mechanic, but it's a container and it gets really hot when it's a day like this. So anyway, this guy here. Mm. Today is the day that our cooling system is being put all together so all the separate parts will become one and then that one part will go to the boat to be installed with the engine which is very exciting so let's start now you guys know we are all about upcycling trying to reuse everything we can but this was not really the case this is the one that was inside the boat and we saw that it was not very happy it already has some tubes shut because they're probably broken and leaking so yeah we went for a new one this time so you have here the new one and the old one and I really wanted to show you how they're different so you understand why we went for a new one how cool is it that it came in a wooden box Ooh, what before and after. It's so shiny, I wouldn't expect that. As you can see, our cooling system is all together. Inside here is that beautiful tube filled with many little tubes. And I'm very happy with this. I just wanted to take the time to explain to you how this works in case you're not familiar with this system. So this is actually a water reservoir, pretty much. We fill the fresh water here on this hole. And then the tube that is here will be pumped with salt water that comes from the sea, usually cold, and then that sea water that inside this, these tubes makes the fresh water cold and then it goes colder to the engine and also the salt water helps to cool down our exhaust. So it's two functions in one, it's all together now. The next step will be to bring this to the boat, install it to the engine and just up and look at how beautiful it will be function of course but I just love how nice we're doing with all the colors and stuff I was talking to the mechanic we're very happy with the job we did with the nylon in the tips it's very firm there will be no leaks we feel super sure about that and yeah I just feel that the water that will go through this will lead back to the sea feeling a bit happier
Sorry, Matt, for your polishing. Is it going? Yeah. It's going to be a pain to get out one day. Hope it never comes to that. All the mounts that we need that are to hang the rudder up are in place. Two on the boat itself, ignore all the mess. And two over here on the rudder itself. Uh, next steps are to hang the rudder up. However, now it looks like, then if you've seen the background over there, it's really dark sky, it's gonna start tipping it down. So this is gonna be for tomorrow, hopefully. You'll see how we can just hang the rudder up, put the big pin through it, and we can start working on the steering. Why are we hanging up the rudder now? Yes, it's been on the floor for ages, but steering wise, we want to have an autopilot that is on an internal quadrant, but our quadrant is outside and we want to fix that. We don't know how yet. We're not making any promises, but we want to hang the rudder up already so we can start working on that. Sack, gonna harvest a bunch Mushroom on the stump Mushroom on the stump Mushroom on the stump Mushroom on the stump I see that racy mushroom On the hemlock tree Gonna go get my ladder Bring it to my baby. Mushroom on the stump. Mushroom on the stump. Mushroom on the stump. Mushroom on the stump. He don't like to work, he's lazy as a log Also got a sidekick who works real hard But it's three foot two Mushroom on the stump Mushroom on the stump Mushroom on the stump Mushroom on the stump We finally got the rudder in place. We took it off and it's been under the boat for so long just because we wanted to have these first base paints on before we actually put the rudder on because of the mounts. Now this is all in place, it's quite cool because we can start working on more stuff like the steering, we can already put the steering wheel in place and figure out a good way of steering the boat around later. There is still one more mount to put on, so there are two, three mounts. One here, one here, and there's another one on top that's a lot smaller up there. However, now there is only the one that's in the rudder. There's an identical one that goes on the boat just to keep the shaft centered and nice and strong. Other than this, it's just the next steps are the same steps as the hull, which is the whiter paint, so the second base layer, and then the PU paint on top of the waterline and the anti-fouling under. One thing I am looking forward to is the rudder system. One thing I'm nervous for is drilling holes in the transom. It is, take the width of my hand, that thick, the transom. So it's eight centimeter thick diameter planks at a diagonal angle. So to drill in, it's gonna take a while and you do not wanna mess that up. However, big step ahead and We'll see about the drive shaft. If anything, we just pull it back a bit. Drive shaft, uh, prop shaft. We'll just pull this off a bit. Put the prop shaft in and put it back on. Thanks everyone for helping out with this. That's it for this week. We really hope you enjoyed the episode. Next week, we've got a bunch of goodies coming for you as well. Before we head off, thank you Trublos and Robert 
for supporting us through PayPal. Also, Brownie, Robert, Thomas, Ron, and Griff, welcome to the Patreon crew. And thank you so much, Veteran Mike, Wiley, Laurie, Dwayne, Joseph, and Greg for the big super thanks in YouTube. Thank you guys so much, and see you next week.